Hi, my name is Robert Balsrak. I am the F-16 subject matter expert and the cockpit demonstrator instructor pilot for the F-16 India Block 70 program. Uh, I have about 3,300 hours of F-16 time in almost every variant that we've ever built. And the one that I'm going to talk about here, this is the most advanced F-16 we've ever created. Um, and in, it is for a number of reasons, and I'll talk about some of those, and then we'll demonstrate some of those in the cockpit. So first of all, this is the Block 70 F-16 from the exterior. It looks very similar to a Block 50. Um, there are some differences. Uh, inside the structure, there are some structural life improvements that extend the life of the airplane from 8,000 to 12,000 flight hours. That's significantly longer than we've ever had for any other airplane. And inside the airplane, there's some significant differences. The first of which is this is an infrared search and track system. This is mounted on the left chin station of the intake. Uh, this allows us to passively track and target uh, targets out into the battle space. On the right chin, uh, this is a targeting pod. We can do a number of things with this. Uh, TV, IR pictures. We can also guide precision guided munitions with a laser. Uh, we can also see air-to-air -air targets at very, very long range and use functions similar to, but not exactly like, the IRST on the other side. The engine in the airplane, uh, the one we're most likely going to offer in India is the GE-132. Uh, it is an incredibly powerful it is the most powerful engine we've ever put in F-16. There is only one other customer that flies GE-132s, and that's the United Arab Emirates. Their airplanes, by the way, are significantly more heavy than this airplane will be, and this airplane will be much higher in performance than them. And one of the most significant things of the Block 70 is the active electronically scanned array radar. This is built by Northrop Grumman. It's called the APG-83. There are no moving parts. So unlike the legacy airplanes that I used to fly with my mechanically scanned radar, what we have on the front of this is about a thousand transmitter receiver modules. It enables the radar to do a number of things. It's incredibly high power and it can multitask. I can do air-to-air -air tasks, I can do air-to-ground tasks, I can do jamming tasks, and I can do them all at the same time. Um, that's a significant change in capability from what anybody else in the world is going to have. So after that, so let's talk about the basic airplane. So as you see, this is a picture of a very basic F-16. This is the basic configuration that India will receive. Notice the Indians want the conformal fuel tanks, so we leave that as part of the standard. Without the CFTs, that's what the airplane looks like. And the reason we put the CFTs on there for the Indians is twofold. There's extra fuel inside there. There is no performance limitations with the CFTs on board. But the other important thing is, for refueling, the Indians want probe and drug refueling. So the very, very significant thing about the Indian airplanes is they'll be able to receive fuel two ways. They can either go probe and drug, or they can still retain the re receptacle refueling like the United States Air Force. So what that means is, from a coalition interoperability perspective, they can get gas from anybody. There is no other country on the, on the planet flying F-16s that can do this. Only the Indian airplanes will be able to do this. Okay, let's talk about weapons on the airplane. So, configuration-wise, that's essentially a clean airplane. This is what the airplane looks like in a notional air to ground configuration. So what we have here, there's your sniper pod, this is the IRST, this is the centerline fuel tank. These are small diameter bombs, so eight small diameter bombs. These are laser guided bombs. These are satellite guided bombs. These are Python 5 short range air to air missiles, and these are A120 long range radar guided missiles. Um, you can mix and match this. You can change this to go configure it with wing tanks or centerline tanks to extend the range. So now you're going to occupy those stations we had with weapons, so now you're going to occupy them with fuel. Or you can put the bigger tanks, these are 600 gallon tanks, so it extends the range even more. But the really neat one is the air-to-air -air configuration. This again is something that only the Indians have. 
The United States Air Force airplanes have only single missiles on stations three and seven. For the Indian configuration, we're offering a triple rail launcher to give the capability to carry one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight AMRAMs and two Pythons. Ten missiles total. That's four more missiles than the United States Air Force can carry on their F-16s. And nobody in the world has this configuration. This would be only for India. There's something else I wanted to point out back on the features. Notice the color of the airplane, how dark it is. The reason this coating is on it's a coating called Uniform Hat Glass. It's designed for two things. Radar cross-section reduction, so it's a special radar paint. And the other thing is it's significantly easier for the maintainers to apply and maintain. This is what the airplane will look like with just the standard paint. That would be a legacy paint job. Um, but what we're offering for the Indians is to do the uniform handlets. There's only a few United States Air Force airplanes that have this. They love this. It's so much better for the maintainers, but that's notionally what an air-to-air -air Indian airplane, and obviously you can drop weight tanks and mix and match and change things, but that's basically the airplane. Do you have any questions? I wanted to understand that uh, is, is this configuration similar to the one, uh, you know, Pakistan has? What is the difference between the two? How would we have an edge above our immediate rival? Yeah, so let me answer the question this way. There is no other airplane on the planet right now with this capability. Um, I will compare it to a United States Air Force Block 50, okay? Uh, the United States Air Force Block 50 has mechanically scanned radar. This is totally different. This is a, it's the difference between uh, a rotary phone and a smartphone. That's how different the radar is. So what that means from an operational perspective is I can see you much further away. I can shoot you much further away. I can shoot you much further away before you even know that I'm there. I can jam you at much further away. There's significant differences behind what's inside the nose of the airplane. So, again, comparing it to a United States Air Force Block 50, it's, it's totally different. The other significant thing is the number of missiles in an air-to-air -air configuration. The Air Force, our United States Air Force does not have this. Nobody has this configuration. This increases the firepower of the airplane in an air-to-air -air mode by a third. Nobody has this many missiles. Only the Indians would have that many missiles. Make sense? And all this could be, uh, you know, a part of Make in India? I mean, you're there. Absolutely. India, so. Absolutely. The offering from Lockheed Martin is to transfer the assembly line that's currently in Greenville, South Carolina, to transfer the entire set assembly to India and have India be the hub for the worldwide export of S-16s. India would be the ones that's doing that. And there's only one other provider in the competition that's offering to do that. We are the only U.S. company that's going to move the entire assembly line to India. No, no other U.S. offering is going to do that. Thank you so much.